About a month ago, the World Photography Organization announced the winning images of the Sony World Photography Awards 2023. This year, a particular winning image from German artist Boris Elgesen has made the news for winning in the creative category. The World Photography Awards, sponsored by Sony and organized by the World Photography Organization, is one of the most prestigious photography competitions in the world for artists and photographers. The competition accepts submission from youth, students, professionals, and anyone of interest, whilst the top prize gets $25,000, and winners across different categories get a career boost. Elgarthen's art, Pseudomnesia the Electricia, was described by Sonny in a press release as a haunting black and white portrait of two women from different generations reminiscent of the visual language of the 1940s family portraits. The caveat to this win, however, is that this is an AI-generated image, which becomes painfully obvious upon closer inspection, particularly in the rendering of the fingers, amongst other things. The image began making headlines after Elgerson refused his award and wrote an essay on his personal website detailing his reasons for participating with an AI-generated image, which is, quite frankly, an interesting read. He says he applied as a cheeky monkey on a quest to find out if such a notable competition was prepared for AI images entering the contest, to which he's now gotten the answer, and that is, no, no they're not. The attention drawn by this winning photograph highlights how incredibly deceptive AI-generated images have become in a remarkably short period of time, going from this to this. Elgarthin wrote that there needs to be an open discussion in the photography and art communities to determine what should qualify as photography and whether AI-generated images belong in this category. The refusal of the award was designed to reignite a conversation that began in late 2022 when AI image generator tools like Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and DALI became publicly available. The argument that AI art is not real art has been the center of massive Twitter debates talks about the impact these tools have on artists who have spent years cultivating a skill for a job that's not relatively doable by AI, and the legal ethics of this have also been called into question as some of these generative AI are trained on public images which may not have been expressly made available by the artists for the use of training AI models. Elgarsen, who has been a photographer for over 30 years, much longer than I've been alive, doesn't believe the act of making AI images that look like portraits should be facts be categorized as photography. And instead, it echoes a new terminology by Peruvian photographer Christian Vinci's promptography as the perfect solution to naming this creative category. Whilst Elgarsen acknowledged his image was co-created with AI to the public, the danger lies in the failure to announce AI use by other image creators and the damage that could do has been covered in research papers on Imogen, Google's text-to-image generator, and a number of news articles. It was just over weeks ago that social media was in a frenzy over the hyper-realistic photos of the Pope in a puffer jacket and former President Trump's mugshot. Taking over two days to properly be announced as AI-generated image, even I, for a minute was sold on these photos being real, even though I couldn't quite figure out why on earth the Pope would wear a puffer jacket in NYC. The need for AI image detectors and guardrails on how far we should go with AI images on social media feels more important now more than ever. No matter how seemingly innocent these photos can be, there can and will be real consequences when they are weaponized by nefarious groups. Seeing as we are yet to fully curb the misinformation and disinformation storm on platforms like Facebook and Twitter prior to the advent of AI image generators, I am not entirely hopeful for platforms to detect and flag down false images that may have life, minority or society threatening consequences. However, AI might also be the solution to curbing misinformation by AI. You're not saying that to stop a bad guy with a gun, you need a good guy with a gun. Yeah, that kind of a scenario, but more actionable. By using AI to catch AI-generated images. Francesco Nucci, Applications Research Director at the Engineering Group in Italy and Principal Researcher on the Fandango Project, which aims to fight fake news with AI, says, AI has many ethical problems, but sometimes it can also be the solution. If other says that you can use AI in unethical ways to, for example, make and spread fake news, but you can also use it to do good, for example, to combat misinformation. 
In summary, generative AI has the capacity to threaten democracies in certain use cases dissimilar to Elgerson's contest entry. However, the conversations packed from this does well to further echo how the need for policies, guardrails, and control over generative AI, especially in imaging, needs to be made soon, and how AI can help combat with AI-generated misinformation. Check out this video on the controversial Pulse Giant AI Experiment open letter signed by Elon Musk, who just launched his own AI company. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.